Hi, this is Mike Botts. For the last two years, I've been working with some good people as part of a project called X-DOMES. That stands for Cross-Domain Observational Metadata for Environmental Sensing. As part of that project, we've been emphasizing the importance of documenting adequate metadata about sensors and observations uh, for the purpose of discovery, for evaluating the quality of the sensors or observations, and for providing uh, provenance or lineage uh, for these observations. We have also been involved in developing a few tools that, that help in this process. Uh, there's a tool to be able to register sensor descriptions, be able to discover sensors and such. There's also an, another tool for being able to gather ontologies or definitions of terms and observations that are used uh, in the sensor world. And then my focus has been on developing a tool called Sensor ML Editor. Uh, which allows us to, to more easily record this metadata about sensors and about sensor processes. So I'd like to talk to you today about uh, progress we're making on the Sensor ML Editor. It is a work in progress, so uh, stay tuned for new additions and improvements as, as time goes by. Also, this is an open source project, so if you'd like to contribute to uh, the sensor mail editor and some of the other aspects, uh, we'd love to have your help. For those of you who are familiar with sensor mail, you know that sensor mail or sensor model language is a standard uh, XML, JSON encoding for describing sensors, actuators, and processes. It is uh, very robust and very flexible, which can also lead to some complexity in, in building sensor mail descriptions. Uh, thus the purpose of the sensor ML editor. Uh, you would no longer have to, to create your descriptions in XML. Uh, you'd be able to use the tool to sort of to create your descriptions in more of a uh, spec sheet type of look and feel. In addition to providing a, a user-friendly interface for you to create your descriptions of sensors and pro other processes, Sensor ML Editor also has the advantage of, of utilizing uh, profiles and extensions that can be defined in Relax and G. These, uh, the importance of this will be will be discussed uh, later on in this in this demo. So to begin with, I'm going to select a particular profile. It's still a very general profile, but it, in it, it I have defined certain properties that I want to be able to use. So I'm going to pick the OEM, the Original Equipment Manufacturer Description, and I'll load that up. And you see that that immediately provides me a few things. It doesn't provide a lot uh, because most of these things are optional. So you'll see them showing up in a moment. But you could, in fact, uh, have a profile that defines an entire form that uh, then just requires the user to fill in the values for the form. You'll see more of that in a second. So the first thing we need to do is go into this add section part. So I'm going to hit the green arrow and here's a list of types of things that I can put in my sensor ML description. So I do want to have a textual display. I do want to have a name that's displayed and I do want to be able to add some keywords. So you see I've clicked all of those. And then the next thing I would like to do is to be able to, to have identifiers. Identifiers are just various means of, of uh, well, of identifying this particular sensor. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. So right now, you see that when I've selected these different properties, there are boxes there. The red boxes indicate that it's a property value that has to be filled at some point. Um, and, and then you'll also notice that at the bottom, I've got this, the section on identification. So if I want to further edit that, which I do, You'll, you might be able to see there are three small dots at the end of the identification. If I click on that, I pop up another uh, dialog box. And what's defined in here are some specific identifiers or identification uh, codes that I might want to add. So I might want to add a short name, maybe the manufacturer's name, maybe uh, a model number. But you see other things that are listed there could be uh, firmware versions and serial numbers and 
ship IDs and mission IDs and so forth. But for the moment, let's go with these three. And what you'll see here is the three that I picked now have shown up as properties here. Uh, if I want to understand what some of these things mean, uh, these are not too difficult, but for a model number, I could click on this little I here. And what that does is goes to a particular ontology where the term model number is, is defined. In this case, it's a very simple description, a numerical designation identifying a particular version of equipment. So, uh, so that's fine. But let's say I want to go back to identification and I want to add one more property, but it's not defined here. So I can go and add an additional identifier. And when I save there, you see it shows up a form here. Maybe I want to call that mission name. And now I want to go out and find, uh, find uh, what the definition is for mission name. So I'm going to click on uh, definition here and you'll see this new little icon shows up at the end. What happens there is when I click on that, I'm going to now be searching some ontologies that I've picked, either in this case an XDOMES ontology or an MMI. And since I'm looking for a particular term with a name, I'm going to deselect description so I don't get tons of things showing up. So here I'm going to type in the word mission. I'm going to hit return. That's going to go search these uh, the XDOMES uh, ontology. And I know there's a lot of uh, uh, particular definitions that are pretty big and lengthy up there. But what I'm really looking for is this guy right here called mission name. So when I highlight that and hit save, then now that becomes my definition. And you'll see that all these definitions are resolvable URLs that allow you to point to and, and, and to read what the description is of that particular identifier. So I'm going to save that. And then I want to go back and add some more sections. So uh, I'll hit go up here to the Add Section box again. And in this case, I'll go ahead and pick um, uh, Characteristics. So when I click that and I save, again, I have characteristics here with the three small dots at the end. Again, I can do the same procedure. I can click on those and see what options I have. In this case, it's, there's some predefined properties that I might want to use, things like uh, physical properties. And so when I click on that, you'll see what that adds are, are the possibilities of adding these other properties about physical properties. So length, width, height, weight, weight in water, weight in air, materials, IP rating, and, and then I can add my own again, just like we did before. So maybe I'll just go pick uh, the length, the width, and the height, and uh, we'll go with that. So now I save that, and again, you'll see this has set things up so that I have these now showing up more or less as a form for me just to be able to click in here and provide the value for them. In this case also, my profile went ahead and defined what units of measure I wanted those put in, so you'll see that it shows them in millimeters. In some instances, you'll be able to set those yourself in terms of your unit of measure. So let's go and look at one more section, and then we'll look at some other features of all of this. So let me go to Capabilities and do Save again. By now you should be getting used to this process. And now what I've got are some other various um, capabilities, such as measurement capabilities, uh, operating environment, survivable op uh, environment, and other things like that could be, uh, could be created in terms of profiles, or if you wanna, want to, you can actually define your whole list right here in the editor. But it's very nice to have these predefined for you. So let me go ahead and hit the measurement properties and see what I've got here. So it looks like I have things like, um, uh, say, sensitivity, or maybe sampling period. Um, you'll see here you can add a calibration curve and, and all sorts of other properties there. So let me go with that. Whoops, let me go ahead and just add operational environment. And you'll see here you've got things like the operational temperature and, and so forth. Down here you see 
uh, survivable uh, ranges and so forth in terms of uh, when you can trust measurements and so forth. But I'll go ahead and just take, take one of those out for the moment and put in, say, operational temperature. And now I'll hit save. Now you'll notice I haven't put any properties, any values into these red boxes yet. And the reason is because I wanted to, one, sort of create, up, create my form. And the, one reason this is important, and you can fill in values anytime you want to, but what I wanted to show you was that we could actually now create a, a profile by saving to re relax in G. And uh, you'll see that that's what that has done right there. Um, I can save that and use that later for, for bringing up this form again. And so now this becomes a reusable form that someone could just receive uh, at this point and be able to go in and start to fill in the values that it's looking for. So uh, that's one of the important things. The other thing is uh, you can now, even at this point, you can start to save this as an XML file. You'll see there's a lot of missing value marks in there that indicating you, indicating you need to put in the values and so on. If I wanted to save that, then I can, I can click Save and it gives me a copy of it. So I can close that. Another thing you can do now is you can save this whole thing. Uh, I can name this uh, my sensor in progress. And now I can save that thing. And if I want to, I can then come back days later and hit open, find my, my particular sensor, and then, and then reload it. Uh, I don't need to do that right now because it's, it's essentially what I've already got. So those are some of the new features on, on this. You can continue to add things like outputs and, and so forth. And when you're finished, again, you just save this as XML. And the other thing you have the ability to do is to now, when it's complete and you're ready to register it, you just click here, put in your login information for the, the uh, sensor registry, and then you're good to go. So it will push it up there, and now it can be discovered by other people. It will also store, store that description up there for them to be able to download uh, and so forth. So um, I hope you'll join us and start to help us with... Uh, with these tools and start to use them or to help 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 us with the development of both the uh, sensor ML editor as well as the profiles that need to be created. Thanks.